chances are you're going to become incredibly resource aware with your Kubernetes cluster. You're going to have concerns about what resources are being used where and what namespaces are hogging up the resources and which namespaces might need more resources. Well, whether we're talking about memory or compute resources, these are things that we need to manage. And luckily, Kubernetes does a couple things for us to make this a bit easier. However, this tends to be a bit more complicated or at least it's made out to be a bit more complicated than it kind of ought to be. So let me try to break that down for you. My name's Tim Patrick and this is Alt3. All right, everybody, let's talk about three ways you can manage resources within your Kubernetes cluster. We're gonna start from sort of the higher part of the hierarchy down to the nitty gritty pod level of resource management. And it begins with a limit range. A limit range essentially provides constraints on your cluster, at least on a namespace within a cluster, by enforcing a minimum and a maximum compute and storage request per pod or container in a namespace. So this is going to be doing it on a namespace level. So you will need to set up a limit range for every single namespace uh, that you would like to add these constraints to, okay? They will also enforce a minimum and maximum of a storage request. So compute and storage, it'll, you could do both, right? You can even enforce a ratio between request and limit for a resource in a namespace. And finally, and this is kind of the cool part, you can enforce or set a default request and limit for compute and memory, okay? Also storage uh, resources in a namespace and automatically inject them into containers at runtime. How about that? So for example, if I were to just create a pod with a container running an Nginx image, if I do not specify a request or a limit, one will be assigned to it by default. Now, it's important to note that if I do specify a request and a limit for a container within a pod, what I specify takes precedent and it will be assigned to that container and or pod, right? so long as it doesn't exceed or it doesn't come under the min max constraints set by the limit range. We'll demonstrate this entirely for you, so don't worry, we'll be showing this off. Next, let's talk about resource quotas. Resource quotas are not the same thing as a limit ranger. What a resource quota does is it looks at all of the resources across your entire cluster. And it enables you as the cluster admin to provision or set aside or reserve a certain amount of those resources for a particular namespace. Okay, so this isn't doing anything at the pod level by setting a min or a max or defaults, right? Like a limit range, but rather this is saying, hey, this is how many resources from our cluster that are available to be provisioned for resources used in this particular namespace, okay? So the way they work, or at least how it's designed to work, people use things in weird ways all the time, is that different teams will work in different namespaces. Typically, I like to think of this as a development namespace, a test namespace, and a production namespace, right? usually the easiest way for us to understand this. Now, currently, you know, this is kind of voluntary. If you wanted to have everything, you know, in one namespace, you could technically do that, though it's ill-advised and I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but uh, this is actually something they are planning on doing or making mandatory. Well, that's interesting. In any case, so the administrator will create a resource quota for each namespace. So what this does is, is that it takes this pizza pie right over here. Okay, we'll just go ahead and blow this up. And we're gonna take those three namespaces that we talked about, 
production, which is what our clients use, will probably eat up most of the resources. So we'll put a P here for our production namespace. And they're getting about 75%, right? Then we have dev, which is probably going to be taking up 10% of our resources. So we'll put a 10 over here. And then we have test. And since we need to run actual data through our test system, uh, this will be taking up 15% of our resources. A resource quota enables us to set this up. Essentially, it's saying this namespace has this amount of cluster resources available to it for compute and storage. Okay. Really nice, really easy. Then finally, we can actually set some things up on the pod level. And we do this by using something called a request and limit. So for example, when I say this pod, or for I should rather say this container requires this much CPU, this much memory. I can say I am requesting this and then the namespace will say, okay, this request will now be provisioned for that container on your pod. It has access to that. Now, sometimes processes on our containers overrun their request. And the cluster will allow the container to do just that. Sometimes they become resource hogs and they claim more than they should. Well, that's where limits come into play. A limit will show up and say, hey, you're butting up against your limit. If you hit this, we're going to stop some processes to keep you from exceeding your limit. Kubernetes will actually kill some of these processes for you to keep that container from overrunning its allotted limit. Right? That's what a resource request and limit will do for you. Now, how about we go ahead and set this all up in our own Kubernetes environment? Here at Alta 3, we offer hands-on labs where you can do things just like this and practice freely without messing up your own infrastructure or maybe your client's infrastructure, okay? Let's go ahead and demonstrate this, starting with limit range. All right, everybody, this is a really good example of a limit range manifest that we can deploy on our Kubernetes cluster. You can see here that we are using the kind limit range and note the casing here. Casing is always important in your manifests, capital L and capital R for the kind key. Uh, if it's lowercase, it will not work, okay? And uh, we're just gonna call this a mem limit range. And what we're doing here is that we're saying that the default limit for in this particular case, memory resources, will be 512. We will be setting a default request of 256. So that means that if we do not specify a limit or a request, these values will be assigned for us. The next thing we're doing here is we are saying, hey, we're also setting a maximum. A container cannot request more than one gig of memory, nor can a container request less than 100 megabytes. Very important that we understand this, okay? And we're setting these limits for type container. This is going to be attributed on a container level. So we could just apply this by using cube control apply tag f and the name of our manifest now we have created this limit range so we can do a few things to sort of test to see if this limit range is actually doing what we wanted it to do now the first thing i need to mention is that there was no namespace called out in the manifest you can do that to set specific limit ranges for different namespaces However, instead, it just applied it to the namespace that correlates with my particular context. In this case, the default namespace. Okay. So I do need to point that out. So the next thing that I would like to do is we're just going to quickly run 
a new pod using a base image. As you can see here, I'm not using a manifest, which means it's impossible for me to actually give it a request or a limit, but instead it's just gonna create a pod running this image. And we're gonna call that pod LR. Cube control run LR with a container running the image engine X 1.19.6. So now we have pod LR created. And we're gonna just do cube control get pods just to quickly see that, yep, LR is up and running. So now let's have a little bit of fun, shall we? We're gonna do a cube control get pod LR tack O YAML. So we're grabbing the essentially the manifest, if we will, of this pod that was created. Now remember, we didn't create a pod with the manifest, we just ran the image. And we're gonna go ahead and grep for request, okay? And as you could see, we actually have requests showing up. And we see that limit range plugin set memory request for container LR. This means that we actually created this request because of our limit range and a default request was attributed for us. How about that? Now, let's have a bit more fun, shall we? So what we have here is a pod manifest and we're gonna make a request for 1.5 gigabits of memory. Fun! The limit range should keep us from having this be made. This should not work. Essentially, we expect it to fail because we made a request greater than the maximum allowed by our cluster. So let's go see and test if this works. So what we'll do is we'll use cube control apply Pack F Linux pod R YAML, and we see that we get an invalid spec. Why? We have an invalid value. We asked for 1536 megabytes, but it must be less than or equal to the memory limit. In this particular case, it needs to be less than one gig. So if we go ahead and say, you know what, 1.5, that was just that was just too much. Um, let's make a change here. We want to want 256 instead, right? We want to want 256 megabytes. And woo, And this is the reason why we uh, have quit overrides, guys. I didn't feel like cleaning that up. All right. So we're going to go ahead and set this to 256. Uh, megabytes and we're going to go ahead and right quit that there perfect and now when we actually click to apply this we'll see that the pod is created you control get pods and there we go now our default if you want to refresh our memory here was 256 so let's go ahead and see if we could do the same thing, and we're just going to quickly delete this. And see if the request that we make will override what the limit ranger is telling us to use as a default. So we're going to go ahead and vim into Linux pod R, and we are going to change this from 256 to 512. Now that we've changed that, we will right quit and we will quickly deploy. That pod yet again. And we see that it created. Excellent. And we can actually go ahead and quickly see if we pull all the way back up to here. We're going to grab pod, not LR, though. We're going to quickly change this to Linux pod r and see if we get a request back and we do and we see that our request back is 512 nice so what we set as a request within the manifest will supersede 
the limit range. Next, let's get into resource quotas. All right, everybody. So now we're talking resource quotas. Now, what this means is, is that we are setting a quota or the amount of resources we're allowing a namespace to have allocated for it. In which case, let's say, for example, we're just making a resource quota for our default namespace. So in this example, we are requesting for our default namespace 10 CPU cores and one gigabyte of memory. However, because our containers will occasionally overrun their requested allotments, we do also need to specify a limit, hard limit for these namespaces as well. So requests is reserving the space for the namespace. Limit is keeping the namespace from exceeding a certain amount. In this particular case, we're limiting it to 20 CPU cores and three gigabytes of memory. So now that we know what this is, essentially keeping us, our namespace constrained, right, within certain parameters in regards to CPU and memory, right, we can then add this to our default namespace, and we would not be able to provision more resources than what are allowed according to this resource quota. Awesome. And I got one last thing I want to show you. I think you guys are going to dig this experiment because we are going to, well, let me put it this way. Pods and Kubernetes, they tend to have a lot of terrible things happen to them. Uh, they, they, they tend to die quite frequently. But in this next example, we're going to stress our pods. We're going to stress them and they're going to scream and Oh, I mean, what's a Kubernetes experiment unless we torment a pod one way or another, huh? Let's get to it. So in our previous manifest, the last pod that we made, we made a pod that had requests. This time we're making a pod that has both requests and limits. In this particular case, we're requesting 300 millicore of CPU, 256 megabytes but we're also limiting it to 300 millicore CPU and 512 megabytes. Now, for those of you who are wondering what a millicore is when it comes into these CPU terms, etc., this is actually sort of a Kubernetes exclusive term, but basically a thousand millicore equals one core. So if we say 300 millicore, that's 30% of a core. That's the best way for me to explain it, but essentially we are saying we're taking 30% of a core or 300 millicore, right? And we're reserving it for our use on this particular container. We are also limiting this particular container to just 300 millicore, all right? So just to kind of help you out there with understanding that term millicore. That being said, that's what we are provisioning for this pod. So let's go ahead and save that. And we're going to do a cube control apply, tag F, Linux pod RL YAML. And now that is going to be created for us. Cube control, get pods. And we see that Linux pod RL is now running. Now we're gonna have a bit of fun here. Just to verify that we actually have our limits and requests set, let's go ahead and run this nifty little command and. I'm looking forward to doing a breakdown on utilizing Linux commands to make managing your Kubernetes cluster easier. This is one of those commands. We are piping the results of one, the standard out of one command, in this particular case, cube control describe pods, right? Linux pod RL to egrep, and we're egrepping for limits and requests, right? So we're gonna get results back for both. And as you can see, we see our limits for this particular pod, 300 millicore, 512, and we see our requests, 300 millicore, 256. Really nice, easy way to figure this stuff out very fast. If you know the commands, you know, just get it back in a snap. In any case, we do have our limits and we do have our requests on this particular pod. And this is where things tend to get a bit more fun for us because we're going to test to see if these limits will be enforced. 
So what we're gonna do is a cube control exec, and this is going to open up an interactive session for us on Linux Pod RL. And uh, we want this to be a bash. Okay, just a bash session for us. And we're gonna make a little change here on uh, a file called resolve.conf, and we're just simply gonna add a name server, 8888. to the end of that file there. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is quickly update uh, that pod. So we're just gonna quickly do an apt get update on that pod to make sure that everything is up to date because we need to install HTOP. So the first part is getting this update going. Then we're going to run the command apt get install HTOP right there on our pod using exec. So now that's gonna get up and running here. Very good, now we have HTOP on our pod. Here's the fun one. We're now going to install, not HTOP, but stress onto our pod. It's a fun little app that enables us to stress a pod, really a container on a pod, in order to test things see how things perform in a stressed environment. Now that we have all of our software installed, we're gonna go ahead and clear this out, and using the power of Tmux, we're gonna quickly create a horizontal split here, okay? And what we're going to do is we are going to run cube control, exec, interactive session, we're gonna get an interactive session going on here, Linux pod RL, HTOP, down here in the bottom. So now we are actually seeing HTOP, which is running on our pod. This isn't my workstation's HTOP, this is the pod. And we see that currently it's sitting at uh, 345 uh, megabytes of memory being used. Now you might also notice that it says we have access to 3.84. Now that's just the whole cluster. Don't worry, it's limited, and we'll demonstrate that here in just a moment. Then, using the power of Tmux, we're gonna go back up to our other uh, session at the top, and we're going to use a, basically set up a terminal directly onto our pod. So now, both of our terminals are on the pod, okay? and we're going to run a fun little command. But before we do, let's just verify very briefly what our memory limit is. As we can see here, we are limited to 536 megabytes of memory. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run the application stress. Stress is going to do just that. It's going to stress the system. In this particular case, I'm telling it to create 600 megabytes of memory utilization. Let's see what happens when I execute stress. As you can see, memory popped up 600, 700, and killed. Let's do it again. 800, killed. Let's do it again. 536 and killed. One more time. 450, we didn't even get to see a clock above the limit. Killed. Kubernetes is killing that process because it is exceeding the limit that was set for it. So yes, Kubernetes will hold the line if you set requests and limits. Everyone, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. All the three offers courses for Kubernetes, uh, and we do hands-on experiments and, and labs just like the ones that I demonstrated for you today. If you're interested, be sure to check out our website. Description uh, will have everything that you need to get in contact with us. Not only that, but let's say you're working on Kubernetes and you have a particular question or issue uh, regarding some of the topics that we discussed today. Feel free to join our community hub. It's a Discord server, and you can contact me directly uh, using that service. So do check that out. In the meantime, everybody, thank you so much for attending this Alta 3 Breakdown. My name is Tim Patrick. This is Alta 3, and I'll see you on the next one.
This video was brought to you by Alta3 Research. We offer training solutions both on-site and online, so you can choose the method that works best for you. If you liked the video, check out the links in the description box below for more information on our course offerings. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell below to see more videos just like this one. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.